Hello, Great Couch family. This is Stanley. Hello, Tito. Of the Great Couch. <laughs> Coming to you again. Mm -hmm. And uh, this week, uh, we're just thinking, uh, just a couple of conversations that I had off offline backstage. Yeah, I, but I think what started it was we're starting our official was marriage mentoring sessions again. Mm -hmm. And it was a question of, you know, when you see people like about to get married, right? There's so much enthusiasm, there's everything, so much joy. I mean, it's like it, it's like a wonder to behold, right? And you know, if you've been married for any length of time, is that there's there's seasons in that marriage where you're thinking, oh my God, did I make the right decision? Mm -hmm. Did I marry? did I marry the right person right and not not I married the wrong person but you're just thinking through that which is kind of the sometimes the dichotomy that something as intense as love can bring in right like you love them but sometimes you could go like ah you know <laughs> I don't love you <laughs> you can be honest I want to kill them <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't think it gets to that, but then you are so angry, right? But that's because of how love itself can be such an intense emotion. And it's interesting because you need something that strong, right? It says many waters cannot quench love. You need something that strong to be able to, to be able to tide you through, right? The long termness of marriage. So it's like how much of a long-term orientation do you have and how do you walk through those seasons? And I, I, the, the question, did I marry the right person? You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, how many times does that thing come up? You know, and uh, over over the years, mm -hmm. I'm 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 learning to ask a a, a different question. Okay. Um, as in, am I the right person? You know, mm -hmm. a, okay. a lot of a lot of times. The question, did I marry the right question? It puts the onus on the other person to mm -hmm. prove that, oh, this is it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. takes culpability off you. you know? mm -hmm. But I think and and a more empowering thought, you know, and Christ helps us to have that thought though, uh, mm -hmm. is that am I becoming the right person or am I becoming a better person? You know. Yeah. So that was that was something that just like so saying, going through the marriage counseling curriculum and things like that, you see all these oh, all these questions like, hmm, I, I remember when I was thinking that who knew that this person was going to pinch me one slap here. <laughs> <laughs> or cause me to forget my religion. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. yeah. Marriage will do that to you. I will tell you to come <laughs> If, if you consider that children are the byproducts, right, of the marriage, yes. So overall, marriage can do that to you sometimes, make you forget your religion, whatever religion you have. <laughs> but in this case, right, we're speaking from the perspective of people who are, um, who who are, you know, who have like faith based, right. That's kind of where we're coming from. Um, but I think that the other thing too is this idea of, um, you know how I mean the first thing that you get into right in a marriage assuming that you made the choice that it could come with that perspective of like I said earlier the long-term orientation to say this relationship is you know not forever but as long as you both shall live right that's the idea but we are not naive enough or we are not as naive, let me put it that way, <laughs> as to think that this is a generalized statement that you can make, right? Sometimes things happen, relationships don't work for whatever reason, and um, that does not make you not the right person, right? If it didn't work in one, it could work in another. But now we're talking about the idea where you're saying, this first one that I'm entering, right? I want to make it work. I want it to be something that will tide, uh, that will stand the test of time, right? Time and tide. So. What, so what are those, um, I don't want to call them self-help, but what are those, I would say tenants that you wish you had had going in 
Mm-hmm. Um, you wish I'd had going in um, into the marriage, you know, as in we all have the commercial, doe-eyed mm-hmm. um, I think that the media puts out and yeah. the stories and movies and what have you. Mm-hmm. But I was just thinking, what what was what was just one one? Yeah, you know what? I I wish somebody had told me this coming in. Um, that is not about you. <laughs> it's about you, but it's not about you, right? I was about um, to say that that does that really is a paradox. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, it's a paradox, right? I I actually think that even the whole institution of marriage itself is like a paradox, right? How do you Uh-oh. have to become one, right? That's the concept. Okay. Principle, okay. Right? How do two become one? Okay. Mathematically, okay. You, you know, it's like how, you know what I mean? So that in itself is sort of a paradox, but we know what that means. Right. But it's just how do you explain it to a person who maybe is mathematically and logically inclined? Right. So that's that idea of it's not, it's not, it's about you, but it's not about you. Right. If you consider that um, you're to serve one another, mm-hmm. right. You have to consider the other person's needs um, greater than yours, then it's not about you. But you see, the tension is that humans were born selfish. Right. So the tension is wanting to take care of yourself first unconsciously. Right. It's not a conscious thing. Nobody comes out to say, oh, I'm making this all about me. But it's that tension inside where you are like, oh, I want to be loved first before I love the other. Right. Mm-hmm. That I. But we don't come out to say that, which is why it's always that idea of a person hurt me, they did this, they did that. But if we were saying that, just like you're saying, if you're saying that, how do I become the right person? Then the idea is, how do I continually stay in this um, state of servanthood, right? And servanthood doesn't mean being a doormat, not at all. But servanthood is like a mindset, right? How do I make sure that I'm serving but you know, in order for you to serve well, you have to be well. Okay. Right? Which is the paradox there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think for for me, um, the the one thing that I I wish I'd realized more going in, um, is this um up and down nature. Mm-hmm. almost like a wave nature of 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 the feelings you know um at first i thought maybe there's something wrong with me as in why 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 don't i feel this way all the time you know um on met expectations you know what you thought going in and this is after marriage counseling or you know, going in so um on met expectations one but it's it's the the wavy nature so sometimes you're on a you're on a you're on a a mountain sometimes mm-hmm. you're in a valley and I, I, a lot of times the negative decisions the bad decisions that i regret taking always mm-hmm. happened when i was in a trough when i was in a valley you know mm-hmm. so i th- i think going in someone had one that oh listen no, there are going to be some ups there are going to be some downs that's just that's just the way the marriage goes just if you keep going the longer mm-hmm. you stay in it there'll be more valleys there'll be more mountains than there are valleys it is mm-hmm. it's what i wish i had known going in so tell me, you know, because anybody that knows you knows that you are an eternal optimist. Did that orientation kind of make it harder? You know how um, it's almost like, I don't know, this is this is a bit of a general statement, but I'm going to kind of say it because I think that women do with the nitty gritty, but it's almost like women are more realist, right? It's like you kind of realize that, okay, the, the, the day-to-day drudgery of marriage and all that, that sometimes you're well, not marriage of ho- maintaining a home and all that, right? Could come in where you don't, your energy levels or also just we now as people who go through cycles of the month, we're almost used to that idea of ah, some days I don't feel, I don't feel up to, I don't feel hundred percent. Right. So I'm just wondering, like, it's the idea that um, eternal optimism, right. Which 
some psychologists who say it's like magical thinking to think that the sun is going to continue to shine at the same intensity all the time, right? As opposed to realistically knowing that, okay, there are seasons and there are cycles of life to go through and that should not change with marriage. Right? It made it very difficult. <laughs> it made it very, 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 very difficult. So that's, okay. that's maybe even more so. Um, more diff yeah, it made it, I, I can't even argue with that. In fact, yeah, uh, sometimes I felt like I was losing my mind, you know. Um, oh. yeah, I it, it affected me. My, my, um, it was a hard lesson to learn. I just feel that my, my, my internal optimism, how oh, this is always going to work out, you know, it had, it had always worked for me coming up up to them through college, through that, no matter how bad the grades were, they're like, I shall know I'll pass this exam. I shall know, you know, there's something better ahead, you know, it, it helped me. So not bringing that in and it not working in the mechanism of, of mechanism of machinery of this, the marriage, the relationship. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, wait, 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 maybe something is broken. Maybe, you know, maybe the other person, <laughs> Maybe there's something wrong with this other person, you know, because you, you get my frame of reference. I think yeah. it has yeah. always worked for me coming up to here. Right. And all of a sudden, I jam rock. Ah, ah. You're not going to look at yourself that something is wrong. You're going to say, hey, what happened? But, but I mean, taking it to our faith, you know, to, to, to the, that even, even Jesus, you know, um, sometimes he had to go into the valley. Sometimes he, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was down and he was up. So, like, okay, if mm -hmm. the, the patriarch, our patriarch of our faith, can have some, high seasons and low seasons okay mm -hmm. then who are you the follower mm -hmm. not to not to experience the same thing so that was like like a spark you know it's mm -hmm. okay uh and then then the idea is that okay it's it's a team sport right we've said this before so mm -hmm. that's okay if somebody's uh if somebody's hands are up and another person's hands are, are down when the time your hand comes down you should help the other person lift their hands up and 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 vice Versa. Vice versa, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you because essentially, like, you know, if you're doing a team sport, then it's we all win and not that one person wins at the expense of another. Right. And I think one of the things that had brought this to me was reading the story of the battle, right? At I, this battle thing again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you have to have a battle to win, right? If you're talking about winning, there has to be conflict in order to have win. So uh, where Joshua was fighting and then Moses, you know, that Bible story of putting his hands up and then he got tired, right? When his hands came down, the Israelites were losing, but then Aaron and Hor helped him lift his hand. Now, this is a combination of many people, quite sure, but I'm thinking about that thing from a team focus. And I think to myself, right, those cycles inevitably that will come, unless except it's pathological right like maybe maybe a person is talking about depression right which is not what we're talking about but just those seasons where it may be work it may be something external that is making the person um not that person that you maybe not giving you the uh, kind of reaction that you want or things like that so to to go down on the reactivity right to take away the reactivity and not say because they are frowning myself i'm going to frown or because they are being clippy i too i'm going to get clippy right it's that understanding that you know what how do i serve now right how do i help support them and support could you know take many forms i don't know each relationship is different so you know what to use to support the person but the idea of saying why are they down why can't they be happy? Why can't they be, you know, this or that, right? That's that I, That's that thing where if you think about how can I best support the person, which is essentially serving them, even though we don't like to hear the word serving, right? If you think about it from that perspective, then each person can give the other the support they need when they most need it, right? In that sense, barring the constant level of support that we ought to be giving each other, you know, in the relationship, so... I I I I know personally as a guy, I I prefer that term support to serve. Mm. Don't don't judge me. Don't judge <laughs> me, but I prefer the term support to to serve on many on many levels. You know, mm -hmm. um, support. Right, me. but Jesus Himself came now to serve us. Like He came as a servant. So I'm just wondering. 
why but i mean i i, I don't don't like, like i said don't judge me we're being this is the couch right this is the great couch where <laughs> you know, we're keeping it real <laughs> I, I i'm more enamored to the to the term support than serve on on both sides of the both sides of the couch you know but serve is the word that we know now as christians so i'm just I wondering know, i know but have time with it right what, what did you say have a hard time with it. I have a hard time with it, you know. And I don't want to believe I'm the only one, you know. Servant leadership. Have you ever heard about that? I've heard about that. I try and practice it, you know. But it's it's interesting that it's yes, we just don't want the word self servant. Imagine if it was called support leadership. <laughs> well, you have a point there. Support leadership would be interesting, you know. Um, yeah. but I, I didn't mean to I because you. I hear I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that has to be honest, right? Like, even though we say servants, but I think, I mean, that's the, that's the ego diminution there, right? That even though the word servant, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are lower than the other person or anything. In fact, it says he that is the least will be the greatest, right? So that's that idea of servanthood is what our whole faith is predicated on in that sense, right? So, I mean, just going back to, to this whole concept of the, the marriage relationship being to mm -hmm. support slash serve the, the <laughs> other person. You know? uh -uh. Hey, 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 baby steps, baby steps. Uh -uh. We're, we're getting there. You know, it's it's really, I think that's what make it makes it more fun when, well, I shouldn't say fun, but more meaningful when, you know, the other person is down and you, somebody comes to lift you up it makes an attempt to try and to try and lift you up and hopefully the the relationship so that you can see okay this is an attempt this is a bid for for yeah. support that this other person is making you know and then vice versa the other time when the person's down it, it makes it so it it's it's a nice combination when it works but typically 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 what normally happens is somebody's down and then the other person gets down pulled down with it somebody's had a bad day at work, you come in grouchy, you're tired, you are you're short, you know, mm -hmm. and the tendency is like one, either, oh, I can be that way also. I've also had an equally bad day and that's not, that might not, not, might not be a force. Or you're like, I don't want this person's trouble. Just <laughs> go with your wahala. And when you come back around, when you swing back, I'll be here. Whenever that is. <laughs> I'll be here waiting for you, you know, and, yeah. and I think these are, these are the, uh, habits and ideologies and mindsets that we want to try and change intentionally, mm -hmm. you know, to mm -hmm. make a bid, especially when it doesn't feel like it, you know, uh, yeah. and also get a, a, a bid reciprocated to you, you know, um, mm -hmm. and that's how marriages grow, I guess, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. So now in that case, going back to our question of, did I marry the right person, right? I think the idea here is to realize that their cycles, you know, mm -hmm. ebbs, flows, ebbs, flows. And so it's not so much as about marrying the right person as being the right okay. person, right? Yeah. In different yeah. seasons. Yeah. Uh, recognizing yeah. that seasons change. And so we are changing. But as we're changing, we not we need not change into a version of ourselves that now um we think that the marriage doesn't suit us anymore, right? It should always be like a positive direction of growth. So, I, yeah. I I agree. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for agreeing. Thank you for supporting me. <laughs> and and serving and serving. Um, yeah, I, okay. I I I I think it's important to have these conversations as a couple, you know, so that everybody knows where each person knows where the other person is coming from, you know, mm -hmm. it, it gives you lingo, you know, like your own personal syntax and what's mm -hmm. the word scale that the person <laughs> can use. And you, all of a sudden you have inside jokes that nobody yep. else knows about and your own mm -hmm. little support. It makes it so annoying to others, right? <laughs> true, 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 you know, but yeah. Oh. But that's okay as long as you know both of you know what you stand for yeah okay so that's it for now i guess that's what we have for you on the couch for yes. this week mm -hmm. uh we're going to be having our second webinar uh thriving marriage webinar series soon so be on the lookout for that and we'll explore these concepts in more detail on sort of what we talked about today 
Yeah. And and please send those comments, emails coming in. I appreciate it. I know some people have gotten those. Oh, why don't you just open the the comments uh, section in your in your uh, in your email, and that's coming. That's coming but not yet. But we feel that with the emails, we now have your email and then we can send you a little more detailed transcript with this thing, some of our thoughts. Um, and every month we send out a newsletter that lets you know what's cooking on the couch in the kitchen, you know, and, and join our community that way. So again, thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next, next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.